Right, how long have you been with the Rolling Stones? Are you one of the original members? Yes, one of the original members. Uh, what were you doing before you joined? Um, well, just sort of bumming around, waiting for something to happen, really. At the age of just 19, Brian formed the Rolling Stones. They were the first of their kind. When you set out to make this story about the Rolling Stones and, and subsequently Brian Jones, what was there a distinct story you were trying to tell or you found something along the way in your research for the project? I knew that he was the founder of the Stones. Mm -hmm. and that he initially brought a lot of his experience. He was more experienced than the rest of them. He had played with other bands in in a way that the others hadn't. Um, and he was the most musically accomplished. He could play the slide guitar. He could, he, he knew what keys Muddy Waters and the others were playing in. Um, so he brought all that. And he also, of course, put the stones together because he put the adverts in the newspapers and put the band together, which is, I guess, an incredible achievement. Um, I didn't really know that much about Brian's own background. I didn't know about the incredible conflict he kind of had with his parents. Mm -hmm. They were very sort of disapproving and unsupporting of him. And that this really, I think, shook his confidence and undermined, undermined him in many ways. So I thought that that was a a very interesting point, which you don't really think about that much um, with a rock star. Yeah. You know, I guess we all have to deal with our backgrounds and work out a way of uh, resolving them with as we go forward into our lives. And Brian had a real problem doing that, sort of a very basic problem. Yeah, and it was uh, it was interesting because the 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 wealth of footage you found for this was pretty mm -hmm. incredible to me. And I was wondering, you know, as an editing nerd myself, I'm wondering if you could talk to sourcing all of that because even in the the credits, it just kept going. The attributions for for where you yeah. pulled footage from. So, what was that process like for you? I had three archivists working uh, with with us. Uh, there was a, a guy called Kyle Gibbon who's very experienced. And then I had someone in Australia, and uh, it was painstaking. In fact, they started sort of eight months before we shot yeah. to try and find this archive, because in the 60s, people weren't filming very much. Uh, so there weren't that many sources, and the home movies were generally Super 8, mm. that kind of thing. And, and so we just had to familiarize ourselves with who had been involved, who had been on tour with them, who were the managers, who, you know, what was there a movie camera around or, you know, um, and then try and track them down. Sometimes, you know, they had died and we'd have to deal with their estates or, you know, it was, so it was a really long, painstaking business that I hadn't, you know, probably if I thought about it a bit more at the beginning, um, I would have been more hesitant, but I tend to sort of plunge into these films and then discover rather too late that it's actually going to be incredibly difficult to get the footage, you know, which is what this was. Because we wanted to get footage that hadn't been seen before. Mm -hmm. And that was also of the Stones kind of, you know, just doing their thing, not performing directly to camera. Um, but we did. They did a great job. I, I, I was very very proud of them for what they came up with. You know, you've obviously dealt with this subject matter for for some time now. Um, how has your feelings on fame changed, if at all? I think it was Whitney Houston who said, you know, I love success. The success is wonderful to, to know that you've really achieved something. But fame is a whole other thing. And fame is impossibly hard to deal with. Uh, you know, she obviously dealt with it very badly. Um, and most do. I think it's, you know, oddly, I think I think Mick Jagger deals with it quite well. Mm. Um, and he's actually, you know, quite a family man. He's very, you know, I mean, he's, I'm sure he's a man of excess, but 
uh, he's very a very you know he's very much a family guy he has great relationships with his kids he's very stable um which is i think pretty unusual on the whole um uh, and he i think that's one of the reasons he's a great survivor and brian i think adored the fame and and the success and dealt with both very badly mm -hmm. you know there wasn't enough uh, self-belief to really pull it off you know if you had to do all over again do you think you'd go the same route again as far as you know now that you realize the demands that are put on you as a tremendous success i'd do it 100 times over if i could i love it